Books are an exceptional source of knowledge and they're good for your brain to read. Some, not so much though. Here are the top five banned books the government has forbidden you from reading. Number five on this list is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. You may be familiar with this title because there was actually a movie adaptation that hit the screen super recently. Back in 2019, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark came out in film format. But this movie was based off of a book and for the longest time this book was super banned. SCMP says this one stands out on the list because unlike the other banned or challenged books, Scary Stories is not political and it doesn't contain any references to or sex. So why were these collections of horror stories so controversial? Some of the stories could be pretty scary and parents felt that they were inappropriate for their children, which is fair considering these are stories about being buried alive, cannibalism, and way more. But for many people, the real issue was the artwork by Stephen Gamel, an incredibly talented illustrator who no doubt caused nightmares for thousands of children since the book's first published publication in 1981. So literally, guys, this book got banned because it was too scary. Think about that for a second. The author literally did too good of a job at making a horror book that people thought no one should read it. If I was the guy who wrote this, then I wouldn't know whether to take that as a compliment or like a criticism, to be honest. The people who banned this thing couldn't hold it down forever though, because at the end of the day, it is some great literature for those who love horror. Number four on this list is Fire and Fury. Now, this one I felt like I had to bring up because it happened really recently with the former president of the United States. Skyscape says, Wolf Wolf's gossipy tell-all describes a dysfunctional presidency perpetually in chaos, zoning in at one point on the day the FBI director James Comey was fired. Comey heard about it on TV. Not all of Wolf's claims are accepted as truth, of course. Trump said he didn't authorize Wolf's White House access and didn't speak to him for the first book. Trump's lawyer, Charles Harder, sent a cease and desist letter threatening a libel lawsuit in an effort to stop publication. Fire and Fury sold out in its first day of a release as a result. By 2021, Trump was speaking to Wolf for Landslide, Wolf's third book in the trilogy. There were countless scandals during the Trump administration, so I feel like this one was just another notch on the belt. Either way though, the government literally did everything in their power to try and get rid of it and stop us from being able to buy it. The opposite happened though, and because it got so much attention, it flew off the shelves faster than they could print them. Number three on this list is Lawn Boy. This story, written by Jonathan Evison, is one of the most challenged books in America in 2021, and honestly, folks, it really shouldn't be. Esquire says, Lawn Boy is the big-hearted story of Mike Munoz, a young Chicano striver working on a landscaping crew in Washington. As Mike fights against the soul-crushing forces of classism and racism to achieve his American dream, he also comes to term with his sexual identity. Though the novel was written for an adult audience, teens fell in love with Lawn Boy, leading it to be awarded an Alex Prize, an award bestowed by the Young Adult Library Services Association to books written for adults that resonate with teens. Critics slammed the book for the LGBTQ content and sexually explicit material, pointing to a sexual encounter between two young men. Evison has received hate mail and death threats as a result of campaigns to ban his book, but he remains uncode. When I look at the wealth of great literature that enlightened souls have sought to ban through the ages, how could I feel anything but try to be listed among them, he wrote. To those who would ban my book and burn me at the stake because they are ashamed of their own past experiences or uncomfortable with any non-binary sexual identifications, I hope you find healing. And literally guys, shout out Jonathan on that one. When I found out that this book was something that people were trying to ban in literally 2021, it kind of blew my mind. Like sometimes I think that the world is past 
stuff like that. And I do want to say that I think most people are. Like in America, 87% of people don't think that books should get banned. So at the very least, regardless of their views on things, they think that there should be a freedom of speech or writing. Either way, the government hasn't actually forbidden you from reading this book. People tried to do that. And I say, you shouldn't listen to them. Number two on this list is Animal Farm. So if you wanted to read Animal Farm now, then you probably wouldn't have too hard of a time getting your hands on a copy. But back in the day, this wasn't always the case. In fact, the government for a long time wanted nothing to do with the book. Spyscape says Animal Farm was a target of censors and spies. The satire revolves around farm animals who rebel, hoping to create an equal society. Instead, they end up living under Napoleon, a dictatorial pig. The USSR saw it as a critique of its politics and banned the book. The UAE briefly banned Animal Farm because of its talking pigs seen to be against Islamic values. The CIA, meanwhile, turned it into a propaganda tool and funded an animated movie of the same name, although spies changed the book's ending. If we think about it logically for a second, it makes sense why a government wouldn't want Animal Farm to get read by the general public. This is especially heightened when we think about it from the perspective of a controlling government like the USSR was. In their brain, they probably saw this book as a bit of a threat. The public reads it and then starts getting some sneaky ideas about how they're going to revolt and start their own new country with a totally new government. And then this even goes a step further because the CIA started pushing this book and marketing it as something against the USSR. What was a fictional story turned into this whole political thing caught between the two biggest superpowers in the world when it was released? And number one on this list is the Anarchist Cookbook. This book has had a roller coaster of a life since it was written. Big Think says, since it was first written in 1971, much of its information is out of date. But some topics, like how to make improvised bombs don't have an expiration date. The book provides instructions for making LSD and tear gas, primers on how to operate various firearms, how to sabotage different kinds of infrastructure, and writing on anarchist philosophy. The book was written by William Powell, a manager of a bookstore in Greenwich Village. Powell quit his job, however, to write the anarchist cookbook. My motivation at the time was simple, said Powell in an article for The Guardian. I was being actively pursued by the US military who seemed single-mindedly determined to send me to fight and possibly die in Vietnam. Its countercultural violent message proved popular today. It is sold in excess of 2 million copies. It should come as no surprise that the book is infamous and controversial, but the kinds of criticism it attracts varies depending on the source. Governments across the world clearly have a negative opinion of the book. It does, after all, advocate for violent civil disobedience. The Anarchist Cookbook is banned in Australia, and the UK possessing the book, though not illegal itself, has often been used as evidence in terrorism cases. A teenager was accused of, and later acquitted of a plot to assassinate. British National Party members in 2008. In 2017, a 27 year old who had traveled to Syria and possessed a copy was accused of being a terrorist. It turned out that he had merely printed a copy of the anarchist cookbook for use in a role playing game in a university society. So clearly, the government does not like this book at all. I think it's a bit much for people to be accused of certain things just by owning the book, but I also kind of see why it happens based on the contents of the text. Just be aware that if you pick this book up, then the government may start keeping tabs on you. But there you have it, folks. That is our list of the top five banned books the government has forbidden you from reading. Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this list and some other scary books that you guys know about. Also, please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Nicholas Playlog, and I will catch you next time.